Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this complete army video for the Drakari. It's been a long time coming, but finally uh, the army is ready for war. Uh, at the point of filming, I've already filmed a battle report. Uh, it's probably live already, the first game of the season uh, the Drakari get to take part. So it's been an exciting time uh, for me to get this list finished off. Been a lot of new models being added in, a lot of paint painting to do, uh, but that's now uh, done and the army is ready for the battlefield, I've been able to use them in the opening game of the season, so exciting stuff. I think it's a Drakari list, it's been quite heavily refined, We're gradually going over different lists, been really chewing through the book and trying to make use of the models that I already had and, and then making some additions just to really turn this into a decent enough army. Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna build up the entire list, introduce all the models and at the very end of stand back and you'll be able to see the entire army laid out. We'll talk about tactics, the structure of the army, I'll cover all the upgrades and the points and so on and the whole philosophy behind it to give you an idea uh, of how to put a Drakari army together and you're welcome to copy this list if you wish uh, I'll call out all the values to you as we go along, you can make a note of them and then you can use the exact list, you can change things around, do what you want uh, but um, hopefully this is a Drakari army that will cause trouble uh, for many of the factions uh, on the channel already so uh, the army list I put together, usually it's what we call competitive fluff. So we try and get a nice spread of the models and a nice collection that I, you know, I'm happy with, that I, I like the army, uh, and then try and make it competitive as much as possible as well. But it's not fluffy no matter what, and it's not competitive no matter what. It's sort of a harmony between the two. And so ho hopefully it's an army that can fight pretty well, but still it's got a nice spread of the models and you know it's a decent representation of the faction. I'm taking some new units and rules uh, from the Blood of the Phoenix book uh, with Drizar Master of Blades and the new Incubi rules and so on. So we'll come to that as we go along. Uh, I've gone for a black background here so you can see the models a bit better. If you like the colour scheme that you see uh, then there is a full painting tutorial for the Drakari here on YouTube. It's a few years old so you need to uh, track back in the painting tutorial section but I'll show you from start to finish how to paint some of the infantry and then for the larger projects such as the vehicles on the plus channel there is an in-depth painting tutorial you know vehicles are a bit more difficult to do there is a full paint tutorial uh, on the plus channel that you can check out uh, you can rent or buy just that one video if you wish uh, or there is the regular subscription to get access to all of the content there on the plus channel plus on the Plus channel, there's a lot of Drakari battle reports, and some of those are 8th edition, and it's me trying out the list, or parts of the list, as I develop it, as I go along. So there's battle reports available on the Plus channel as well, and then there's also all of the uh, Tactica videos, the uh, Army development videos for the Drakari as well. So plenty of content there on the website for these also. So Drakari then... It's like a it's 40k pirates really. They're meant to sort of raid uh, the opponent, whoever it is. I just don't suppose they care who it is. They'll just raid whoever. Uh, <laughs> so that's the kind of the pirate kind of idea. So pirates, they turn up out in the middle of nowhere. They move in quickly. They grab what they can, and then they disappear again. So it's this, this kind of raid that's uh, a swift attack, and then they disappear again or they kill everybody and there's, there's no one left to, to tell the tale that kind of idea going on with the Drakari so I'm thinking of of hard hitting but then the, the downside of the Drakari is the softness of the army so there is that to try and negate as much as possible they can just get blown away their ships aren't particularly well armoured uh, 
and the infantry, you know, six up save, five up save is not that amazing. What it's called like glass hammer, where they can hit hard, but it can shatter, the army can break because it's not that resilient. So try to compensate for that. You'll see a number of ways you can uh, protect and try and negate that as much as possible. And then I'm trying to think, trying to make them as hard hitting, both with shooting and close combat. So those two I think I need to go for. So if I go all close combat with the Drakari, the opponent's just gonna get their whole army shooting at them for a couple of turns, and that's gonna be no good. So I need to be able to soften up targets before a close in for the kill. So you know, you'll watch out for that theme as we go along. Uh, so, Okay, and see here they are, they're in amongst the space marines here causing havoc. So I want an army that is going to get stuck in, in amongst the enemy, but I've got to time it right. I don't want to get stuck in too quickly and then just get blown away. So there's got to be the, the right timing. Just giving you an idea of the theme. You can build very different uh, Drakari armies. You can go for uh, the Homoculus Covens, which is a, a very strong theme. You can go for the Witch Cults. Here again, uh, a very strong themed army. Or you can go for the carbals, which is the, you know, the vehicles and the warriors and so on. You can z zone in on one of these and build an army around that, or you can take a mixture of two or all three. I've gone for two. I've gone for witch cult and carbal, and the army sort of split 50-50 between the two. Again, it's a good representation uh, of the Drakari, and then also two. Uh, the two detachments to fulfill the different roles and the whole aim and philosophy of the army as well. So I'm just going to fast forward here and build this up. I'm just going to try and explain everything as I go along, justify everything, why I'm taking the different choices. And it's all just to, it's a tactic of video and help an army build a video to help you out as well. And then a, a visual video, you know, a chance to see the army as well and to see the collection. So, so with that in mind, the, the style that I'm going for, you remember you've got power from pain, so your army builds up in its intensity as the game goes on. So six is to ignore wounds, you're starting off with on turn one, then you, you get onto battle round two, uh, you then get reroll advances and charges, so just gearing up towards this ultimate slaughter towards the end of the game. Plus one to hit rolls, so really encouraging to get stuck in turn three. Emboldened by bloodshed, auto pass morale, so when the fighting is getting desperate and you're taking casualties, you're not going to budge. Uh, and then mental of agony, minus one to leadership, the survivors, their morale starts to collapse. So you see that whole pattern, even with the rules there from power from pain. So there's those to remember. And if you've got witch cult, there's combat drugs that are random, or you can choose uh, bonuses to take for each unit, plus one attacks, plus one strength, and so on. So there's enhancements there, but again, it's pushing in the direction of softening the enemy up, closing in for the kill, and then murdering everybody turn three onwards. So, I'll go through in the order in the book, uh, I reckon, and we'll build up this list here. So, uh, the structure of this army, command points, the ability to have command points and to use them for stratagems and so on during the game is so important now in 8th edition. There's tons of stratagems out there, and... If your opponent's got loads of command points and you only have a couple, it's, it's a big advantage to the opponent. So you need, uh, you need the ability, or you need command points as a resource. So, uh, with that in mind, I went for, there is a unique detachment you can go for, the Jakari, but I didn't go for it in the end. It's a raiding force. Uh, three patrol detachments, you receive four command points. If it's six, you eight command points. I've still gone for double battalion. That gives you five, five, battle forge, 13 command points. 13 command points is, is good. It's pretty good. Nice lot of command points here. And the stratagems for Jakari aren't that amazing, really. Uh, I'll come to some of them a bit later on, but there's, there's ones in there that are are okay. There's fire and fade, you get to shoot and then move again, that's one command point. There's lightning fast reactions, which is very useful for trying to keep units or vehicles alive. Uh, it's, well, it's infantry vehicles or bikers. It's, it's minus one to hit rolls, that's two command points. That one's pretty useful. Uh, you can put units into deep strike with webway portal. Even your aircraft you can do it as well with screaming jets, keep those off the board. So. My army is not utterly dependent on the stratagems, like you can cope without them. But things like rerolls, some of those stratagems we've just looked at, need the command points there. 
so double battalion is the direction I've gone and so one battalion is going to be a Kabul with uh, warriors and the vehicles and the other one's going to be the witch cult uh, battalion and so I've got two arms of the army uh, and that grants you a nice healthy amount of command points to start off with so I'd, I'd recommend you do that for any army you make sure you get a decent amount of command points if you can so I need to fulfill the first battalion it's a Kabul and we'll cover the trait for them I've been experimenting with different ones. I've had some great input on the Plus channel from some Drakari players uh, for which one to go for, and I've, I have listened to what they've said. <laughs> Gone for uh, Carbo of the Black Heart here, and it's paid off. Well, it has worked out really well. Units of this obsession have the power from pain ability, treat the current battle round as being one higher. So, when you come to your power from paint on turn one, you're actually getting turn one's bonus, nerd to suffering, six plus to ignore damage. We also immediately get uh, the second turn battle round number two, which is rerolling charges and advances. Just for that card, well, not the entire army, but anyone in that detachment also gets reroll advances and charges. So that's great, you're getting onto those a lot quicker, which is excellent. And uh, units of this obsession that do not have power from pain ability instead gain the inert to suffering bonus. So for example, uh, vehicles such as a Raider or one of the Flyers uh, get six plus to ignore damage. So for a glass hammer army that's not that resilient, six is to ignore damage is very useful. So say you take 10 wounds on a Raider, it's dead. You roll 10 dice, you get three sixes, it's alive. And you know, that's a massive bonus. And sometimes you're going to get crazy results, you're going to roll a double six, a triple six, and, and wounds that are meant to have, should have come off, don't because of this trait that you've chosen. So I highly rate that. Previously I was running the one where you get plus six inches to your range, which is okay, but the army's quick enough to get within range anyway. This one is uh, the one I'm fixed on at the moment, and it's excellent. And remember, whichever one of these you go for, there's going to be stratagems and all of traits and, and, and so on, relics, that are specifically for that carble. Uh, so bear that in mind as well. We'll take a look at some of these uh, later on. So Carbol of the Black Heart is the Carbol that I've gone for, so, so specifically for that ability. So uh, you know the entire army is on six plus to ignore damage, even the vehicles now. And there's a lot of vehicles in my army, and so that's a very very welcome bonus for sure. And in the games I've played, it's helped out. So. Uh, the first battalion we're going to work on here, so the first is Archons, I've got two of them and these have, have transitioned over from the previous list, these are the two lead ones uh, that Games Workshop produced when the Drakari are completely revamped one with the helmet and one uh, bareheaded here, I've given them both pistols and agonizers uh, but I, I've changed their war gear, war gear around a number of times here but that's those two and it's sort of going for like a father and son kind of theme with these. So you've got the evil father and his nasty son working together. These two pirates, father and son combo, uh, to lead this raiding force. Archons are uh, cheap enough. Just got my lists here. So 55 points for the Archon. Uh, then take uh, an Agonizer uh, as well uh, for him. For both of them and then uh, from the index you're still allowed to do this from the index the option's not in here but from the index for Drakari you're able to take a blaster so 17 points to the blaster but it means instead of a blast pistol which is all right but it's only six inch range instead you've got a weapon that's 18 inches range and you're just making use of that two plus ballistics you've got twos to hit they get reroll ones for carbol units so Two's to hit rerolling ones usually with a blaster. The blaster is strength eight, minus four, d6 damage. It's an excellent weapon. So that's excellent. They're quite durable. Uh, Shadow field two up in one save. You can't reroll it for any reason, but two up in one save is excellent. You've got five wounds, got five attacks. And my army doesn't depend on these in, in close combat. They're all right, but there's uh, plenty of other characters out there that they're going to face that are going to be way much better than them. So uh, they're mainly there for sniping away with their shooting weapons, granting reroll ones uh, for the cardboard units as well, and then an extra bonus for this guy, the sun. I take a relic for him, and this is pivotal. He's the one of the, the 
key units for this army because of this relic. And again, it was advice coming from Plus Channel subscribers. Uh, Writ of the Living Muse. It's for Carble of the Black Hut, so it, it has to be from that. Carble, it has to be for an Archon. Rear a wound rolls for friendly Carble of the Black Hut units within six inches of the bearer. So he's acting like a Space Marine Lieutenant. So this guy grants rear ones for shooting and rear ones uh, for wounding. You know, a lot of my five powers three plus to hit. So now it's three plus to hit rear rolling ones. And then it's, uh, you know, it's dark lances and blasters. It's strength eight. Usually it's going to be three plus to wound vehicles, three plus to wound re rolling ones. You know, it's going to save you loads of command points and like the re rolls being used up. Uh, and it's, you know, anyone from six is getting that. So it's vehicles, flyers, infantry, the whole lot. Re rolling ones to hit and to wound. And so you'll see this army's mechanized mostly, but this guy goes on foot because I want him in amongst everything and be granting that reroll one uh, to hit and to wound. Now, as far as him not being able to, as him being on foot, you know, he's got an eight inch move. He's gonna move nice and quick across the board. He's gonna roll about an average of a three or four for his advance. So he's gonna be able to keep up with the quick vehicles as long as they're not moving too fast. So, uh, and then he's a character, he can be hidden away. So he is crucial. So you may well see, you know, talking about strategy here, as the Chikari close in for the kill, it'll be a cluster of them because they'll be trying to keep within range six of him. So as they move, their firepower is going to be threes to hit, re-rolling ones, threes to wound, re-rolling ones, try and get that as much. Even the flyers just converging on that point where he is just to get the most accurate firepower possible. And it's proved to be exceptionally useful so far. You know, so we started with two little models here, but you know, they're, they're important for sure, make this guy the warlord. So if he gets sniped and so on, then you know he can just focus on his job of uh, providing those rerolls. This guy's the warlord. I'm just going to bury him away. I'm not reliant upon him to cause devastating damage in close combat and so on. He's there as a supporting unit. He can fire from the safety of his vehicle and a further uh, incentive to keep him out of trouble is his warlord trait which is around here somewhere yeah it's labyrinth cunning again it's cardboard of the black hearts so this all ties in well so you have to take that cardboard to get this one whilst the warlord is alive roll d6 each time you or your opponent spends a command point to use a stratagem uh, if you roll a six you get a command point so it's you or your opponent I, I'm going to be using a fair amount of stratagems, no doubt the opponent is going to be picking up sixes. And whilst he's alive, he doesn't even need to be on the board, I don't think. So, but he'll be safe inside his transport, and he's just constantly running, trying to get sixes to rake in a few more command points. So during a game, he's going to pick up a couple to help out. So really, your army's 13 command points plus a couple more, uh, if he's rolling up his sixes as the game goes along. So double Archon, very, very happy uh, to have those two in the list. So uh, next you need three troops to fulfill the first battalion so I've gone back now I'd stopped taking uh, carb light warriors for a long long time uh, but they've been reintroduced here and, and I, I, hopefully they'll be a very useful uh, asset to this Drakari list. So I've been working on some of these recently for painting up three units of five is the way I'm going. All armored splinter rifles, and then one of them armed with a blaster. So we'll assemble these squads here. So I used to take unit 10, I used to sit there on foot with a dark lance, and I used to get blasted to pieces. It, was, it wasn't very mobile, and so that they fell out of favor for a while. Uh, but again, listening to what people have said, and uh, putting them inside venoms seems to be the way to go with them and so uh, that gives them their protection gives them their mobility uh, and their cheap choices you know warrior unit 30 points of five of them 17 points for a blaster 47 points not even 50 points for a unit and you've got uh, buried inside that unit it's a strength eight minus four d6 damage shot so we'll just assemble these here like so and then there's a blaster in there, squad leader, and one more, and then another one. And it bulks the army out quite nicely. I've got three of these nasty shooting weapons 
in the list now like so there they are the Mosley crew and then here's the Venoms one two and then the third one just here and so some of the I've been painting up some new models here just to helpful for this because I had 10 originally needed to paint up some models with blasters and, and then and to make a few squad leaders and then these two venoms this one and this one they're new ones which I've just painted up as well for this list but a uh, nice bit of symmetry going on here nice simple battalion but maybe a core con uh, structure for a battalion that you can go for here for Jakari so I've made sure that the transport vehicles are in this cardboard detachment because then they'll get the six plus ignoring damage that comes through uh, on these venoms so we'll cover that now introduce these in venoms are 75 points and if it was just for transportation i probably wouldn't have bothered but the venom's a good gun platform as well remember they're open tops so the guys inside can fire so you've got all these rifle shots that can fire get to in range 12 you get two shots each uh, and then you've got the blaster as well range 18 able to let off add a decent anti-tank shot the venom's got six ranges toughness five only a four up save but does have a 5 plus invulnerable save for Night Shield. Excellent. Does have a flicker field minus 1 to hit rolls. So your opponent's minus 1 to hit them. Great against Ashman, Tyrant, Tau, uh, and other armies that sort of need a 4 plus to hit usually. So uh, helpful enough. And then remember, 6 is to ignore damage coming through also on the Venoms. And there's 3 of them. It's like a swarm of them. So you kill 1, but there's still 2 more. Uh, and they are annoying for sure. And then they're well equipped for shooting Splinter Cannon. Uh, and you can take two of them, range 36, rapid fire 3, but with two of them it's rapid fire 6. You get to them in range 18, you get 12 shots each with these. And again, if I keep them in range of him, 3 to hit rerolling ones, to, uh, and then uh, wounds, 4s to wound against infantry targets with poisoned weapon rolls, and then rerolling ones as well. So it's a brilliant combination. So that's that, that's quite a, a core part here of that battalion. The tactic for these is to provide firepower support uh, as the nastier units close in, just to dacker away at the opponent, just to reduce the amount of firepower that the opponent has, the amount of resistance the opponent has, just to chip away all of this firepower, both from the unit inside uh, and then also the uh, splinter cannon shots from on top, just saturating firepower coming through. Uh, grab objectives to move around the board nice and quick. Venom's move at 16 inch move with them, so very, very quick across the table. Uh, and then they're not as significant in the game. I think the opponent's going to go after other stuff, so the survival rate for these hopefully will be pretty good as well. So uh, the Venom's then very, very useful. My army's nicely mechanised. Uh, transport capacity actually for those is five, I think. So, you know, you can take five, but you can't really start adding characters. No, it's five. So you just take the, the minimum infantry squad and you can't put anything else in there. But uh, supporting units here, helping me get a nice lot of command points, a little bit of anti-tank, plenty of anti-infantry, plenty of mobility. So, I mean, if these are on foot, they'd be picked off just easily and lacking in mobility. So that combo uh, seems to work out well. So... I will come back here, I'm not necessarily going to go for this in the exact order, we'll save the Witch Cult a bit later. Carb Light Warriors are just covered, they need protection, you must protect them, uh, otherwise they'll be shot, blasted to pieces, so that seems to be the way to, to play them at the moment. Uh, so, yes, right, so this is something new here. Uh, the Lemayan, as they're called, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce them. They're an elite's choice. I'll mention these here now. Uh, they're very, very cheap. Running them at... Uh, 15 points each. Just double check for you. Yeah, yeah 15 points at a time. So, uh, they get to re-roll the hit rolls whilst within 3 inches of the Archons, a little bit of uh, bonus for them. Uh, they're helpful as a supporting Archon charges in, 
first, you send, then send in these uh, Lamians here. They get two attacks, uh, threes to hit, uh, but they get a poisoned weapon. You had two to the wound rolls made for this weapon, so you fight against infantry, it's going to be you know, twos to wound, unless it's targeting a vehicle, in which case it's sixes. Uh, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. So you're going after a nasty character, the Archon charges in, a couple of these move in, and they, they cause a load of mortal wounds. Pretty good. So, add, there is an official model. I've just used a couple of witch models here, just to act as bodyguards. I've chosen these two of these serrated daggers, so they look the same. And so those act as Lemians here for the Archon. So he's got a couple of nasty ladies to do bodyguard duty. One and two. So they hang around with him. The tactical use for these is objective holding their characters. And so you can just leave them at the back of the battlefield if you think it's safe enough. And they can hold on to objectives and you know, it's cost you 15 points. And you're able to then not divert much of your resources. You sort of start leaving venoms behind and chunks of your army instead if it's safe enough you can leave these behind to control objectives and the characters unless the opponent's got sniper units and they can't be shot at so useful in that regard for holding uh, backline objectives and useful as uh, to contribute to the combat of this guy as so he charges in he can do some damage with his slash uh, with his uh, agonizer but then the ability to cause some mortal wounds pretty good if he needs to take a character down, get past them once say for example, so very cheap, that just helped me bring up, my army was at 1970 points, that brought it up to 2000 points with the 215 point models so they're in and again I've used witches here of a certain pose you could do your own conversion work just to represent the Lemayans here and even, is that Lemayan? yeah, even the artwork here it looks just like a witch, same hairdos and armor, so and it works out fine. All right, we'll leave that. I'm just, just going to cover this battalion first of all. So, and that's which cult for those. So, yeah, I'm going to introduce the raiders. Yeah, it's just checking the rules there and about taking extra transports. You can for every other choice. So they've all got their dedicated transport. Because of the presence of these characters in the Lemayans, I can take the extra transports, no problem at all. So there's one raider painted out. I put all the crew on it as well, which is a nice feature to add. I'll zoom in uh, to these models a lot more on the start collecting video. So if you want a closer look, you're dying for a closer look at these models, then check that video out. It's more of an introduction just to collecting Drakari in general. But there's one uh, raider. I'm gonna swing this one out here and move these warriors out of the way and put this raider in again we'll zoom in a bit later on I'll zoom out a bit later on and see the whole army so there's one raider and I do have a second one just here again with all the crew painted up so you see I've got a nice spread of, of vehicles now So, you know, the opponent's got to try and crack open all these transports. Now, again, 5 plus in one save, a bit better for wounds. You've got 10 wounds instead of 6, so that helps out. And remember, because I've brought them into this battalion, 6 is to ignore damage. So, yeah, your raiders have gone from 10 wounds really to about 12, because you're going to be rolling up 6s for the damage coming through. So, happy enough with those. They have a transport capacity of 10. And I've gone for a un unique... Uh, combination uh, to fill all of that up but again their main job is to protect the units that are inside. If I go on foot I'm slower I'm more vulnerable to getting shot so the key for the Drakari is to take these quick transports to help shelter these precious units as you move them across the battlefield. You put a lot of units on foot and move in, the opponent's going to cut loads of them down with firepower, you're going to be slower and then see so your, your actual delivery of the damage is, is a lot less so the transports are key for trying to preserve the uh, the attack that's going to come in. So, configuration for those, I've modelled them with Dark Lances, but I've switched to Disintegrator Cannons. It's a difficult choice. We've chapter proved they're all the same value now, so 15 points, whatever you go for. The Dark Lance, bit of anti tank, strength 8, minus 4, d6 damage, range 36. The Disintegrator Cannon, all the Primaris around uh, these days, Assault 3, strength 5, minus 3, 2 damage. Excellent for taking down heavy infantry or chipping wounds off of vehicles if you need to. So I've gone for disintegrator cannons because I've got lots of Dark Lance stuff and a lot of blaster type weapons so a bit of anti 
heavy infantry is what I've gone for with them. So the points cost for the Raiders is 80 points, the so 65 plus 15 for whichever weapon you choose to go for. So transportation is the key with those, swift transportation across the board. I'm going to push them back and you'll get to see who goes inside these as we go along. So I'm just checking the battalion, is there anything else to add in? Yeah, one more thing. And that is a Ravager to provide some firepower support. So one Ravager, like so. This one does have the triple dark lance on it. Just gonna stick it just there. So you see I've got another vehicle here uh, in the list. Building up quite nicely here. And yeah, when you're collecting Drakari, see the unique the, the color scheme that runs throughout the army so it's quite unified in that regard um ravager here you got 10 wounds toughness six then so the toughness five is a little bit tougher and a four up save still gets the five plus invun save as well so you're up against the nastiest of firepower that five plus invun save is going to block you know a fair bit that's going to come through up against the tower for example we're going to block a fair bit of damage coming through so useful enough points value for that is 140 points with three of the Dark Lances. I don't take any other upgrades. Let's keep it nice and cheap. Uh, it hangs around at the middle of the table, back of the table, uh, or it moves up with uh, the Archon nearby. Where is he here? So you might see the Drakari army advancing something like this, all the models inside their transports, and then this guy just buried in between everything. He's there, he's in range six of this one, this one, the Raiders and the Ravager, and that whole cluster is all getting reroll hits to their shooting and wound rolls as well. Reroll ones for shooting and then for the wound rolls. So that's the kind of combination you might see on the battlefield. So I think that fulfills the battalion. So that's Carbal with the Black Heart. That's that battalion fulfilled. Five command points been picked up. I've got speed, I've got protection. As well, you know, all the vehicles here, 5 plus in one save, minus one to hit rolls against them, 6 is to ignore damage coming through, and all the precious fragile infantry, and there's more to come, are protected inside these transports. So the opponent maybe cracks open one of these, Venom's brought down, but look, there's still all of those to try and get through. So plenty of wounds, uh, frustratingly, for the opponent to try and get through to wipe out the entire army. So, next, the next attachment, uh, I didn't mention it at the start, but it's an air wing detachment. Now this uh, is, has two roles, two key purposes here for this Drakari list. First is to act as a major distraction for the opponent. So, uh, people say, oh yeah, but you get flyers, your opponent's going to shoot them. That's exactly what I want the opponent to do. I want the opponent to fire at the flyers, because when they fire at the flyers, they're not firing at this. Inside here is this nasty cargo of stuff, which you're going to see as we build this up a bit. And so I want the opponent's attention diverted away from here because it's these that are going to grab the objectives and move up the board and unleash their close combat ability. Plenty of firepower available as well. And so I want the opponent trying to shoot down the flyers is the key. So uh, you'll, you'll see them a bit more <laughs> when we zoom out here. Um, so it's an air wing detachment, so I get an extra command point. So I get 14 command points for the list, plus the command points the Archon's able to harvest. The first is a Razor Wing Jet Fighter. So we'll bring this one in. There he is. And again, if you like the colour scheme and the unique markings that I've gone for, I'll talk about it more in the Start Collecting video, and then remember the painted tutorials available on both of the channels. But there he is. Razor Wing Jet Fighter just there. Very happy with how that one's come out. Their jets are fantastic, they really are good. It makes quite a presence on the battlefield, but there's that one. Like so. Uh, so Razor Wing Jet Fighters to provide some firepower support. So you've got 10 wounds, you still get that 5 plus uh, invun save. I'm going to take them from Carble of the Black Heart, because you select your Carble or Witch Cult here. So that even the flyers are going to get 6 plus to ignore damage coming through as well. Just to try and preserve and keep them alive for as long as possible. And then in the game, I'll often try and even keep these flyers at their minimum move, 20 inches, and keep them in range of that Archon, so that even they get reroll ones to hit and to wound as well. So the Archon are clustering quite tight, 
which is safe enough in 8th edition because there's no blast markers and so on. Packing them tight, max, maxing out that firepower as much as possible. Uh, then for the air wing you need three flyers. So the first one's the razor wing. Then I've gone for double void raven bomber. So there's the first one, which I painted up about th four years ago. And then there's the brand new one that's fresh off the painted desk, which has come out pretty much the same. Just happy with the windows in this one. Didn't use super glue for the windows, just use PVA glue. So there's no misting going on with that. Very happy with how that's turned out. Beautiful, beautiful model. It's a fantastic model. And the rules are pretty good for these as well. So the Void Lance is at strength 9, so helpful against land raiders. As I've paid the points for missiles, so the Razor Wing comes out 145 points, the Void Raven Bomber is 165 points, that's with the, the missiles paid for as well. Uh, the missiles are okay, they just support a little bit. You've got the Implosion Missile, Assault D3, Strength 6, AP minus 3, 1 damage. Or the Shatterfield Missile, Assault D6, all range 48, Strength 7, minus 1, 1 damage, rerolling your wounds. And then the Razor Wing has an extra missile, which is the Monocive. Sorry, it comes with Shatterfield, and it has Necrotoxin, Assault 3D3, it's 2 to end unless it's a vehicle, no AP minus. And the Monocive Missile, which is Assault D6, Strength 6, AP 0. Two damage though, if you're going to shoot at Primaris Marines, for example. Uh, you can go for dark, uh, disintegrated cannons. I've gone for Dark Lances here, just the armor punching ability with these. Um, so, double Dark Lance for the Razor Wing Jet Fighter. Void Raven Bomber, gone for the Void Lances. Uh, strength 9 minus 4 D6 damage, better range, range 36. And so again, 5 plus Invan save for the Night Shield. As the opponent, I want the opponent shooting at these, they're flies, they come with minus one to the hit rolls, hard to hit, so, you know, that, that's going to take a little bit more effort to bring them down. Got 12 wounds in the Void Raven Bomber, 10 wounds in the Razor Wing Jet Fighters, so it's got a fair bit of effort just to bring down all three of those flies. If the opponent is wise, and maybe starts going after the transports here, and ignores the flyers, the flyers get free reign to shoot as well, so it's, it's difficult for the opponent. You can try and ignore the flyers, but then they're just going to keep shooting and manoeuvre wherever they need to. If you do go after the flyers, it just creates a gap for my main force to move up. You know, I was thinking to myself, just concede the fact I'm going to be shot at by the opponent. So what is the opponent going to shoot at? And then try and build an army to anticipate that. And then the Void Mine. It's a very, very nasty weapon. The rules for it are amazing here. Once per battle, Void Raven Bomber can drop a mine over an enemy unit it moves over in one of its movement phases. After Void Raven Bomber has moved, pick an enemy unit flew over. It's a vehicle or monster. It's roll uh, three dice. On three passes, it's small to wound. If it's an, any other unit, uh, you roll d6 for each enemy model in that unit up to a maximum of 10. So you fly over a unit of Space Marines, tactical squad of 10 models, for every three plus is a mortal wound. That's utterly. Horrific. So, a nasty sting in the tower for the Void Raven Bomber. And, you know, fluff wise, this fits in with the whole trying to, theme I'm trying to create with the Drakari. These jets that scream in uh, and soften the opponent up, this, this air raid that takes place, and then the main pirate force moves in as well. And at the final stage, then they close in for the kill, they disembark from their transports. And isn't that the same as the pirate ship? The pirate ship starts off at longer range, it softens the enemy ship up with its cannon, like the jets, then it closes in at closer range, softens the enemy up, and then as their sh ship's been blasted to pieces, then the pirates man the boarding planks and cross over in, and then it's the, the point where the ship's captured. And so it's the same kind of theme going on here with this Drakari list. But uh, when we zoom out, as you'll see, this army's quite bulky here. A lot of vehicles involved, and so that's why it's taken me a fair bit of time to, to get these all painted up. So Void Rain Bomber, that completes that detachment. So we've got one detachment left, and that's the Witch Cult uh, detachment coming up next. I'll maybe back up with... I'll get that. It should be alright for room. No, I'm just going to move the Ravager out of the way. Because a lot of the Witch stuff is going to be transported inside these two raiders here. So. Uh, we'll go for that next. So again, it's a battalion detachment. The cult that I've gone for, and I may well experiment with this. I could shift it around, but uh, I like 
cult of the red grief the speed of the kill uh, when I go for the kill I want to make sure I get into close combat so units of this obsession can charge in the same turn in which they advance so you're disembarking when you're in a vehicle which is you know, this scenario here disembark three inches move eight advance which is re-rollable usually if you're in it for your uh, power from pain and re-rollable here as well uh, when you advance and you can also add charge yeah so you disembark three move eight Usually you can re-roll your uh, advance roll because you'd be on turn two onwards for your power from pain ability. Then you're allowed to charge even if you advance and it's re-rollable. The charge is re-rollable with the succession as well. So a scary distance you can go, you know, three, eight, advance, charge, which is re-rollable. You can very easily catch opponents out with that. So I like that. It means that you've got certain wall of traits and relics as well, which will cover it uh, a bit later also. So the first thing for this battalion then is to cover HQ choices and again I'll need two. So there's something I need to cover. I think I'm all right with doing this. If it is wrong check out the comment section. There'll be some experienced Drakari players that will correct this but I think this is good here. Because um, one of the HQs I take is Drazar Master of Blades. He's an HQ choice, but he's not a witch cult choice. Blades for height. Drakari beasts and incubi, mandrakes and scourges units can be included in a Drakari detachment without preventing other units in that detachment from gaining a Drakari obsession. So it doesn't interrupt the witches with their benefit. Note, however, that these units listed can never themselves benefit from a Drakari obsession. So I take Drazar, but he cannot benefit from the witch cult obsession, and the unit of incubi with him as well. They won't get it, they're just neutral but I believe I can still use them to fulfill the requirements for that detachment. So you can still be that HQ choice that I need uh, to be that second HQ for that potential. I think that's fine, just clarifying that. I think so. Yeah, 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 I think it's all fine. Yeah, it just says here, when you're choosing the cardboard or a witch cult, you have to make sure they're all from the same cardboard in order to get that benefit but it uh, clarifies here that they aren't going to impact that at all so it's fine. So I'll, I'll cover the succubus first. I have one succubus so I wasn't going to take two and the new Drazar model came out the new rules so I dropped the succubus and then put Drazar in. So there she is and I'll zoom in on the start collecting video so you can see but again following that same painting tutorial same colour scheme throughout here uh, as seen in those two uh, tutorial videos. There she is there, just weighed down with a, a coin. Just uh, stop her from tipping over so easily. So obviously she goes inside one of the uh, raiders. Nicely protected inside the transport. So succubus there, nice cheap, 50 points. Uh, 10 points for the glaive and 10 points for a blast pistol as well. So now you've got a model that's able to uh, fire a strength 8 minus 4 d6 damage shot. So you swing close combat if you're able to shoot during your turn you're still locked in combat whereas you're inside a transport uh, a ballistic skill 2 plus here <laughs> with this nasty pistol uh, can catch people out as well so 4 plus in one save in close combat, no at any, any point enemy, enemy infantry units have to try and pull out, they have to do a test to try and pull away uh, she grants real hit rolls of 1 in the fight phase for uh, witch cult units and she gets combat drugs one of those random abilities you know plus one attack plus one toughness whatever it may be uh, for her I then take uh, a relic so I'm paying an extra command point for it but I think it's worth it it is cult of the red grief here it's the blood glaive again it's unique to cult of the red grief uh, you can swap out the archite glaive and instead of minus one to hit rolls there's no minus at all she's going to hit on twos re-rolling ones Gets plus three strengths, it fights at strength six with it. It's AP minus three, it's D3 damage, it's a brilliant weapon. So, just to enhance her with that blade. So, very, very happy with that, brilliant model. Very, very happy with that unit choice. So, I'll put her. Yeah, I'll we'll just tuck her there. So, the second HQ is Drazar, Master of Blades. I never would have bought the model, didn't like it. Games Workshop, do a resculpt, utterly amazing model, and so. He's in. <laughs> and, and the rules are evil as well. So this is the guy uh, that's to disembark and, and give the killing blow, the final blow, the, uh, to 
finish off the enemy here. This guy's a nutter. Deadly. So Drazar Master of Blades uh, is 100 points here for him. A beautiful focal point for the army. I really took my time painting this one. Yeah, a real focal point for the army. Amazing sculpt, a large base, beautiful base work you get with the model. And again, just use the same painting process. I'm really happy with how he's come out. So he's not painted up how he is in the Games Workshop artwork. I've painted it up to match him with my uh, color scheme throughout the army, but very, very happy with him. And again, just one model. So he's gonna go nicely inside one of the Raiders. Another nasty character that's hidden away, that's revealed just at the, the right point. So, I'll now refer to here for this. So he is should be points values. Just double checking to make sure. 120 points for him in total. Ah, oh boy, right. I was <laughs> 120 points. I was just worrying there, but uh, I've just checked the back of my book. Which updated the chapter approved, and they've dropped him. He's 120 points down to 100, so it is correct. I was going to drop the two Lemayans there, uh, but it seems as though he is 100 points now after chapter approved 2019. So the list doesn't need to change, I was thinking I'd have to adjust it slightly. If he is 120 points officially, I'll just drop the two Lemayans, it's not going to impact the structure of the army. Uh, but I think he is 100 points now for chapter approved 2019. Uh, the points come through, so 100 points, absolute bargain if he is. Uh, that so the new rules though uh, so you know two plus weapon skill strength or toughness all at six wounds got lo loads of wounds got four attacks two up armor save he's got a five plus in fun save his weapons each time he fights he could choose one of the two profiles below and go for the single blade which is plus one strength eight minus three two damage so he's fighting at strength five uh, or you can go for dual blades which is strength for the user strength four eight minus two two damage uh, a model attack is with dual blades can make two additional attacks each time it fights. So he's gonna get six attacks with that combination at two damage a time. You know, he's a Primaris killer. He's uh, fantastic. He's gonna get power from pain stacked up on top as well. Uh, then he's got murderous assault. If this model charges in the charge phase, he can fight an additional time in the next fight phase. So <laughs> he's gonna get to fight again. So, you know, potential of 12 attacks here. And then lethal precision. If a wound roll for, for an attack made with a melee weapon by this model is an unmodified six, add uh, two to the damage characteristic of melee weapon for that attack. So potential damage four, which is crazy. Tormentors as well. Uh, each time you make a row test, it's just a slight reduction for the opponent there. And then master of blades. F1 to the wound rolls for friendly incubi units whilst within six inches of this model. So uh, plus one to wound also. So he's going to get that bonus. So he's going to plus one to wound rolls. So he charges into Primaris models, fours to wound, becomes threes to wound, or if he uses a single blade, it's going to be twos to wound. Uh, and the other incubator unit nearby, uh, if you have them, uh, are going to benefit from that as well. So all in all, he's excellent. You can't wipe out an entire army, but in the latter stages of the game, for mopping up duty, this guy's brilliant. So, excellent. Yeah. He's got no carbles. You need to remember, you know, he's not going to get any of the benefits of the witch cult of or the carbol, uh, but uh, he gets his own benefits just there. But there's Drazar, fantastic model, excellent character, deadly in close combat. So, you know, he'd be revealed at the latter stages of the game. So early stages of the game, the initial firepower, middle stage of the game, getting close, firing more weapons at rapid fire range, chucking out grenades, softening the opponent up, firing pistols and so on, and the latter third of the game, then these nasty units start to disembark and finish off what's left of what the opponent has. That's kind of overall strategy. You know, I'm itching to use Drazar straight away, but i will be patient, I think, to soften the opponent up. Yeah, you know, then you've got the Incubi with their rules. Uh, three attacks each, crazy amount of attacks. There are plus one to the rune rolls because of Drazar nearby. Uh, if they call sixes in close combat, you have two to the damage also. So now Incubi could charge the vehicles and cut them down so, they're very, very good. And the Clavex has four attacks base, plus two if you go for dual blades. There's six attacks just for a squad leader. So, 
<laughs> so I'll take up the unit of five. Now unit of five is enough. Now matching perfectly with Drizar. Now these go inside uh, the same radar as my characters. So I've now used up seven slots here. I've got the old lead models. Uh, on my desk to paint at the moment is the new plastic models. So I'll add those in, but these will do for now, no problem at all. This is the older lead ones, which are still great models. So I'll put those five in. So now you've got a bit of a bodyguard going on with Drizar here. It all ties in nicely. And a nice, solid, uh, close combat unit. Three attacks each. Three up armor save. Pretty good. So, very, very happy with them. Now in. And they're cheap. 70 points for them. So that's an elite's choice for them. Then, uh, so, to fulfill the battalion, I've got my two HQ choices. I'm now trying to fulfill this witch cult battalion. So uh, I've gone for unit of, units of witches. Uh, and I've changed my approach of these. I've gone for small units of five. It was quite tight for points, but tactically uh, useful enough and you'll see how this works here. So the structure of these is uh, one uh, Hecatrix. You get three attacks of these, so I've gone for an Agonizer uh, on her, and then a Blast Pistol. So each squad's going to have a, a pistol bearing now. Another Strength 8, minus 4 D6 damage there. Then uh, three regular Witches. And then one of them, I give a Shard Net and Impaler, like so. Because the rules for that are pretty good. So that's that unit five, and I just repeat that three times. So it's the same uh, combination of those. So there's the first unit. So one unit of five. This is how I'm trying to keep the whole army mechanized. One unit of five will go inside the other raider. Then I'll need another unit of five. They'll go inside that raider as well. So I'm putting, and you can do this in 8th edition, I'm putting two units in the same transport. So, something like that. And then, when Chapter Approved 2019 came out, struggling for points, but then with a the slight points reduction, I was able to afford uh, the transport necessary to help these out. So this is the third unit. Again, all the same loadout for these. So, I was able to afford to take a fourth Venom. That has a transport capacity of five. So that unit goes inside there. So I've got a witch unit that needs to go inside of Venom. But more firepower. Uh, that Venom is taken from within this uh, carble. So it will be inside that detachment. Uh, but it means that it will gain the benefits there of the 6 plus to ignore damage and so on. But the witches go inside. Now they're all mechanised. Everything's mechanised apart from uh, the Archon there granting the real ones to hit and to wound. But I don't want him mechanised. I want him... Uh, out there granting the benefits. The army's bulked out nicely here. Uh, so the witches then, uh, yeah, yeah, unit 10, it's okay, but two units of five does the same thing, just more flexibility. If they need to work together, they can both charge in, uh, or they can go out and do their own things. So there's more flexibility. It means I was able to fulfill that second battalion and rake in all those extra command points. And the other great thing is, each unit I can give one of those pistols to, each one has a squad leader with more attacks, and each unit is able to chuck a grenade. So, you know, out of this transport, I believe, two units inside, two separate units, I could chuck out two grenades. And two blast pistol shots as well. So I like the idea of that also. And they've got no escape here. Uh, you have to roll off infantry units trying to pull away from them. They've got a four plus in one save in close combat. And, and then the Shardnet and Impaler give you the points for this in just a moment. Do Chardonnay and Impaler is a useful weapon. Strength for the user, it's AP minus one. It's two damage. If the bearer fights, you make additional attacks, you get an extra attack as well. If an infantry unit is affected by the no escape ability, so usually it's D6 roll off, uh, within three inches of an enemy model armed with this weapon, the unit's controlling player rolls a D3 instead of D6. There's a much higher chance of you keeping that opponent tied down and locked in close combat with those witches. So, you know, it's going to help with morale. Unit of five is not going to uh, have much of an issue with morale compared to unit of ten that loses eight models or something. So, two units of five. I like the idea of that. You know, more pistol shots, more grenades, 
more attacks, better for morale, more flexibility. So that's the option I've gone for with them. And uh, more, more war gear as well. So witches are in, and each one's randomly getting an enhancement there for combat drugs as well. Uh, as far as you know, being small units and the danger of overwatch, maybe try and charge in the transports first to absorb overwatch. Once that target's locked down, then charge in the witches and, and play it that way. But they're in, and uh, it's nice, nice dynamic going on with the army. Got the carbolite detachment, got the witches featuring in as well. So I really wanted both of those participating if possible. So very happy with that you know, from my own perspective there. Then. Uh, the other witch cult units I have is Reavers. I dropped the Hellions, I still don't rate them at all, I don't think they're any good. So at the moment, Reavers are in. I was thinking of large units, but again for flex tactical flexibility, uh, I've gone for small units of, of three. And I've got three units of three, so nifty enough around the board. Quick objective grabbers. I can move them across to wherever they need to be to support with firepower or in close combat. So I'll maybe run them down this edge here. There's unit three. I've always rated these. I had to have them in the army. They're beautiful models. And they've come out particularly well with this colour scheme. I do like the way they've turned out. So three units of three. I'm just checking what weapons they're armed with because each squad has a blaster. So they're able to lend a bit of you know, they're able to contribute with their firepower as well, which I think is useful enough. Just tucking those in, there they are. Uh, so, the, the point for these units here, the battle doesn't hinge on them, they're not this high impact one single unit that's going to move around the table, just small units the opponent may well ignore. They're super quick, they go 18 inches across the board, uh, they've got matchless swiftness if this unit advances, I can still fire the uh, blaster because it's an assault weapon, but if I do, it's 8 inches added guaranteed on top of that. So 26 inch move, they're ridiculously quick around the board. Your four up save, the toughness four, they've got two wins, so a bit of durability with them. Again, six is to ignore damage coming through as well. Uh, and no other upgrades. Cluster cow drops and, and grav tans, no, because I'm not expecting them to get in, stuck in close combat. I've got other units dedicated to that. They're just to support with speed, uh, objective grabbing, turning up where I need them to be, and uh, that's pretty much it. And if they do need to get stuck into close combat, they can, but it's only ever just to contribute to what's already going on. Maybe to tap out vehicles and so on uh, to stop them from shooting. But uh, a nice bit of speed, fair but super fast speed for the army with them. So that is the entire list. So. I, it's a mixture of everything here, but I, I'm very ha I'm happy enough with the structure. I've got everything mechanised, everything's quick around the board. I've got a lot of firepower here. Uh, you know, if I count up the number of strength eight minus four weapons, uh, or that kind of equivalent, I've got one in each of the Reaver squads. That's three. I've got one in each of the uh, Warrior squads. That's another three. So that's six. Uh, the two Archons. Uh, that's eight. Blast pistol here, that's nine for the succubus. One for each of these squads, that's twelve. Uh, then the Ravager, that's fifteen. And then for the three flyers, that is twenty-one shots that are going to be at sort of strength eight, strength nine, minus four, d6 damage. So a lot of shots coming through and potentially most, the vast majority of those shots being at re-rolls of one to hit and re-rolling ones to wound when they're all clustered together. There's no reason why most of this army can focus in and stay near that arc on there, granting those benefits. So, I, I, I'm liking the combination that's going on. And then from a hobby, hobby perspective, I've kept the units that I like. So, you know, I like my transport vehicles. I, I wanted witches in the list. I like the flyers. Uh, the Venom's happy enough, but I really wanted the jet bikes, and so I'm trying to get that balance of an army that I like and enjoy, and then one that's competitive at the same time. So what I'll do next then is I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to re rearrange the army so you get a chance to see the entire army laid out, just to give you a view of what it looks like once it's all set up. Alright, so there's the, the list, just a chance to zoom out to see everything. It's quite hard to get it all on the screen here, but there's the flyers, the air wing detachment. That's to be the major distraction for the opponent, so to 
absorb and distract their firepower while the rest of the main force moves in. Now I think the key for the Stark Elder Army is to soften uh, whichever enemy they face, they must be softened up. So decent firepower coming from the air, uh, well equipped vehicles, uh, anti-infantry here with these Venoms chucking out tons of shots and their occupants firing as well. And then loads of anti-tank ability also uh, coming from all of the blast pistols, the blasters, the firepower from up here and even blasters equipped and all of these. Uh, warrior squads as well and then the final blow the killing blow when they close in for the kill disembark from the transports uh, at just the right point uh, and then these nasty close combat units emerge these characters here uh, Drazar Master of Blades the Incubi the witch is supporting as well and using whatever transports are still alive to charge and absorb overwatch uh, and that should be the killing blow if the opponent does try to go for uh, shooting these to pieces it's a fair bit of work you know Five plus in fun saves, some vehicles at minus one to hit, sixes to ignore damage, a lot of vehicles to chew through, uh, a lot of my nastier models are characters, they're going to be quite difficult to pick on as well. So hopefully uh, this Drakari list will cause trouble and uh, will perform well as we go into the new season. But uh, glad to have this army up and running now to get these new models painted up and to have a completely revamped Drakari list ready for war. So... Uh, that's the video. Uh, check out the Start Collecting video for a close-up view of these models uh, and for more information about collecting Drakari in general. Uh, check out the other army videos that are already on the channel. Uh, keep a lookout for battle reports of these. And then over on the Plus channel, you've got the in-depth painting tutorial, uh, the army development videos, and then exclusive battle reports featuring the Drakari uh, available there as well. But uh, that's the army video complete and ready to go. The Dark Kin have arrived. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.